Good morning. We've got Pam and Joan and Ian and me. So there are four of us and maybe some others will join us. Uh, good morning to all who may join us later in the day. Uh, this is Tuesday, January 25th. It is the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul. And St. Paul is you all, I'm sure all know, uh, was considered, he, he wasn't a very nice guy. He, um, uh, he tried to eradicate Christianity. And then as we will learn in our first reading today, uh, he saw the light on the road to Damascus and uh, it, it changed his life. Uh, it says the what I found this morning, it said there is no evidence to suggest that Paul has arrived on the road to, to Damascus already with a single solid coherent scheme that could form the framework of his mature theology. Instead, the conversion and the associated understanding of the significance of the resurrection of the crucified Jesus caused him to rethink from the ground up everything he had ever believed from his own identity to his understanding of the second temple of Judaism and who God really was. The transforming effect of Paul's conversion influenced the clear antithesis he saw between righteousness based on the law, which he had sought in his former life, and righteousness based on the death of Christ, which he describes in the epistle to the Galatians. Based on Paul's testimony, and the accounts in Acts where it is specifically mentioned that Paul was taxed to be a witness to the Gentiles. It could be interpreted that what happened on the road to Damascus was not just a conversion from first century Judaism to a faith centered on Jesus Christ, but also the commissioning of Paul as an apostle to the Gentiles. Although in Paul's mind, they amounted to the same thing. So today we celebrate this feast of the conversion of St. Paul. Uh, my name is Kathy Hawken, and this is Morning Prayer through the courtesy of Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in Tequesta, Florida. To join us today, go to Good Shep Online. Uh, you stream, you, there's a worship tab. You click on the worship tab, the drop down list. There's a place that says prayer. Click on that. And then scroll down and you'll see a picture of uh, prayer books in the pews. And that is where you get the live feed. Immediately underneath that is the uh, uh, lesson for today. And you can download that and follow along. The service will be available beginning at 10 a.m. And all of the Good Shepherd's communication channels, Facebook, YouTube, and the prayer page of Good Shep Online. So good morning on this slightly chilly morning. And we will begin morning prayer right to. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Sing and rejoice, O daughter Zion, for lo, I will come and dwell in your midst, says the Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Come, let us adore him. And good morning, Wendy. Uh, we will say together the Veneti. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving 
and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are all the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Come, let us adore him. This morning, we will say together Psalm 67. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the people with equity and guide all nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us blessing. May God give us his blessing and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And now we will hear the story in our first lesson, Acts chapter 26. Indeed, I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things against the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And that is what I did in Jerusalem with authority received from the chief priests. I not only locked up many of the saints in prison, but I also cast my vote against them when they were being condemned to death. By punishing them often in the synagogues, I tried to force them to blaspheme. And since I was so furiously engaged at them, I pursued them even to foreign cities. With this in mind, I was traveling to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. When at midday along the road, your excellency, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun shining around me and my companions. When we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It hurts you to kick against the goads. I asked, who are you, Lord? The Lord answered, I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. But get up and stand on your feet. For I have appeared to you for this purpose, to anoint you to serve and testify to the things in which you have seen me and to those in which I will appear to you. I will rescue you from your people and from Gentiles to whom I'm sending you to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. After that, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem and throughout the countryside of Judea and also to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do deeds consistent with repentance. For this reason, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the other little things was that although he was not one of the 12 apostles, uh, there is writing that he may have been the greatest apostle. Somebody's opinion. Let us say together the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense. And he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. 
Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Good morning, Debbie. Our second lesson is from Galatians. For I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel that was proclaimed by me is not of human origin. For I did not receive it from a human source, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a re revelation of Jesus Christ. You have heard, no doubt, of my earlier life in Judaism. I was violently persecuting the church of God and trying to destroy it. I advanced in Judaism beyond uh, many among my people of the same age for I was far more zealous for the traditions of my ancestors. But when God, who had set me apart before I was born and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me so that I might proclaim him among the Gentiles, I did not confer with any human being, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were already apostles before me. But I went away at once into Arab, Arab, Arab and afterwards I returned to Damascus. Then after three years, I did go to Jerusalem to visit Cephas and stayed with him for 15 days. But I did not see any other apostle except James, the Lord's brother. In what I am writing to you before God, I do not lie. Then when I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was still unknown by sight to the churches of Judea that are in Christ, they only heard it said, the one who, is for, for, who formerly was persecuting us is now proclaiming the faith he once tried to destroy. And they glorified God because of me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things. He has mercy on those who fear him. Now let it Of the body and the life of the last. Amen. And that wouldn't be a bad fate, the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Separate. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. 
let people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Our first colleague today is for the feast of the conversion of St. Paul. O oh God, by the preaching of your apostle Paul, you have caused the light of the gospel to shine throughout the world. Grant, we pray, that we having his wonderful conversion in, in throughout the world, conversion in Jesus Christ our Lord, who, excuse me, grant, we pray, that we having the wonderful conversion in in remembrance may show ourselves thankful to you for following his holy teaching through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A colic for grace. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer of self-dedication. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, to so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you, and then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ, and particularly those throughout the Anglican Communion, remembering today especially the Diocese of Kargira, Tanzania, the Right Reverend Darlington Bendakiha Bishop, we also pray for our Diocese of Southeast Florida and our Bishop, the Right Reverend Peter Eaton and our Companion Diocese, remembering today especially the Diocese of the Dominican Republic, the Right Reverend Moses Quazada Mota Bishop. A prayer for mission. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray also for our own parish family and those dear to them, remembering today especially Joe and Connie, Ruth, Scotty, Joseph, Dave and Marion, Joan, Lynn, Rachel, George, Nolan, Joan and family, Susan, Mary, Drew, Joe, John, Cassandra, Charlie, Bob and Kim, Teresa and family, Jake, Janie, Dennis and Janet, Barbara, Joe, Leslie, Richard, Madeline, Patty and family, and Shirley. We also pray today for our Connect Ministries, remembering especially good guys and morning glories, that the men and women of Good Shepherd may strengthen their bonds of fellowship and service, and youth group, that our middle and high school age members may know the fellowship of the Christian community. Let us say together the Good Shepherd Parish Prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, Make our parish of Good Shepherd truly a community of prayer and belonging. Raise up in our midst and resources the leadership which will enable us to act upon what you would have us do. In this place and in a ministry of love and concern for others, open my mind and heart to discern what you would have me do. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we invite your prayers and petitions uh, of thanksgiving, uh, either uh, held in your heart or shared with all of us. And Ian asks that we pray for Sunday's annual meeting, that the members of Good Shepherd may review the state of the parish and elect new leaders to enable us to act upon what God would have us do. And that is certainly true. And I find it hard to believe that it has been three years since I started my time on the vestry. And it is um, it has been a wonderful uh, blessing to my life. And I know it will be to Ian's as well. We are so lucky to have people in our parish who will step up and want to help because uh, not everyone answers that call. So we're thankful to all of those who do. Pam says she's thankful for morning prayer and leaders. I love starting my day this way. And oh, Pam, so do I. I heard um, this morning, I was listening to the Today Show before uh, we started and Judge Sotomayor was on and she has just written a book. Uh, and it's basically, it was in memory of her mother. And one of the things that her mother taught was what good thing are you going to do today? And I thought that really went along with what we try and do here. And we have our be kind, which is very similar. But what good thing are you going to do today? You don't have to be a political leader to start that chain and do something good. So I thought that was really kind of a fun, fun thing. I would also ask your prayers for my son, Philip. He had foot surgery and he will be in a lovely boot for a number of years. He had to have the bone cut and re-put together. Sounds horrible to me but I ask that he doesn't hurt too much. That is my prayer. <laughs> and we ask for safe travels for Ian and Letty as they head to Knoxville. And we will see you here uh, through the wonders of technology. Now let us say together a litany of thanksgiving. Let us give thanks to God, our Father, for all his gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for the beauty and wonder of your creation, our earth and sky and sea. We thank you, Lord. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ, we thank you, Lord. For our daily food and drink, our homes and families, and our friends, we thank you, Lord. For minds to think, and hearts to love, and hands to serve. We thank you, Lord. For health and strength to work, and leisure to rest and play, we thank you, Lord. For the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity, we thank you, Lord. For all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice, we thank you, Lord. For the communion of saints in all times and places, we thank you, Lord. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. To him be praise and glory with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And finally, a prayer of St. Christostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have an absolutely fabulous day. A uh, little chilly, but uh, refreshing. And that's a plus too. We will need to remember these days in July. So bottle it up. Head out once you head out. Be kind and do something good today. See you tomorrow.